Shut up and sit down. Joining me in studio tonight is... Hi, I'm Josh Sherry. I'm Evan Kearns. So, gentlemen, third DRS zone. What's your thoughts on that? I think it's good. Like, I know a lot of people disagree with DRS and Formula One, but I think it promotes overtaking to isn't fan boost, I think, is a great idea. And I don't think it's actually going to promote much overtaking. I think what it's going to do is it's going to allow drivers follow more closely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll keep the pack closer together. It'll keep the pack closer, you... It's going to promote overtaking, obviously. That's why it's there, but it's not going to promote overtaking in that area, I don't feel. Okay. Is, was there many overtakes in Australia last year? I don't quite remember. There wasn't many. Like There really wasn't that many at all. No? Um, all I can remember in terms of overtakes is Alonso, Hulkenberg, and who was it? Remember the three cars going side by side down the main straight? No, I don't remember. Do you not remember? <laughs> I fucking know no. him last season. <laughs> three cars going side by side down the straight, yeah. But the, I think the third year rests on it's after turns 11, 12. It's on that kind of short straight. It's between 12 and 13. Between 12 and 13. Yeah. I think the third DRS zone is going to help prevent what happened in 1995. What happened in 1995, Josh? Well, in 1995, Damon Hill set the record for the biggest winning gap. It was actually a joint record with the 1969 Spanish Grand Prix. He lapped uh, Olivia Panis twice, who finished second. Jesus. There you go. That's what? Been- <laughs> Lapped second place twice. Yes, that's, that's amazing. It was uh, the finale. It was the because in 1995 the Australian Grand Prix was held in Adelaide for mm-hmm. the last time. Yeah. Uh, but then four months later, uh, it was the Grand Prix opener in Melbourne. So within four months, we had two Australian Grand Prix. That's fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. There you go. Will we facts uh, of the day? Will we <laughs> predict our uh, qualifying top three? Absolutely for Australia. Go on, you can start. I'll start. I'm biased, obviously, but we know what Mercedes Q3 engine modes are like. We know what Lewis Hamilton's like on a hot lap. He's one of a kind. So I'm going to go pole position, Lewis Hamilton. Second place, Sebastian Vettel. And third will be uh, Valtteri Bottas. Did you see Hamilton's mention of the party mode for the 2018 engine? Oh, I heard this. Yeah. The crazy mode? I think apparently they've like added on an extra mode on to qualify and on top of like increased reliability it's, it's, it's ju- they're, they're, just, they're just doing an Elon Musk they just want a ludicrous mode <laughs> yeah. it's like the headrest flies off <laughs> just Hamilton coming out of shit like <laughs> with no seatbelts <laughs> are we unanimous on a Hamilton pole no you're not okay no, no. I'm, I'm going to say pole position Max Verstappen second place Danny Ricciardo third place Valtteri Bottas Whoa! Wait, 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 wait! Hold that on. That is a neck on the line. No, it can, is predicting, but no, predicting um, Ricardo and Verstappen on the front row isn't actually that far out. No, I, I don't think that's that's that. Red one Bull, it's it's a track that could suit Red Bull. Uh, they're two very good drivers. Bot- you say Bottas, Bottas, isn't? Bottas over <laughs> Hamilton. Yeah, Bottas over Hamilton. Why not? First race of the season. He's well, now he, he's now played a part in the development of the car. He's put in fuck loads more miles in testing. He knows that car better than anybody else in the world. I but, think for the, uh, first, for the first part of the season, he may or may not know. Lewis Hamilton's 72 pole positions. And? Bottas is what? Two. <laughs> and what? Well, like, look, how, how, wait, though. How often was Valtteri... How long has Valtteri... First off, how long has Valtteri Bottas been driving in Formula 1? And secondly, how long has he been driving a car capable of a pole position? Yeah but, yeah, but the thing you're saying about because he didn't get time to develop last year's car that doesn't make as big a difference as you as you say it does in my opinion because Hamilton came into the, into the same car alongside Rosberg in 2013 and beat Rosberg but do you think Rosberg's better than Bottas? yeah okay Frank Williams doesn't think so and he had both drivers Frank Williams now was two pay drivers yeah <laughs> <laughs> come on uh, fair enough where do you actually on the top of two drivers where do you think they'll qualify? very far down is, I, that, is that their fault though, or I is mean, that Williams' fault? Fifteen, they fifteen or sixteen. They won't make Q two. They're going to struggle. They'll struggle to make Q two. I think they're struggling. I know. I think they'll just creep into Q two. Like, well, actually, no. Who, who Lance is a Lance is a poor qualifier. We don't know what Strachan can bring. <laughs> Strachan, <laughs> Strachan. <laughs> um, well, so hold on though. Okay, so we assume right. Cyber's going to be at the back. Let's be honest about that. Yeah. Has Has, has or Williams? Is hard to say between the two. I'd but, say Williams. 
Haas Haas appear Haas are the better drivers. They start. They're going to start the season well. They looked hot in <coughs> in in practice in, in in testing, and I think they'll carry that through to Melbourne. Um, then Ford, Ford, then Ford, I think. Sorry. Sorry, go on. Force India? No, I, th- I, I think you're looking at having um, Tara Rosso and then Force India. Force India are fucked. No, no. They're, they're bringing a lot of updates into Melbourne. That they haven't I tested. don't think their testing speed w- is relevant yet. But they haven't tested any of the bits they're bringing. So? Are Braun we? wasn't tested either. To see what they did. <laughs> that was a one in a million like ch- opportunity. Look, it's, it's new wings, side pods. They can car. It. It'll be fun. It's a new car. No, they had the floor. Had the floor. <laughs> um, so, so, Josh, g- g- you give us now. You give us yeah, your your. I top agree with three. Evan. I, I think Hamilton's going to stick it on pole, followed up by I think. Look, there has never been an Australian to get a podium in Australia. I think this is Danny Rick's year. I think Danny Rick's going to get second, and uh, I think Bottas will finish out the the top three in in on the podium. Can you Rick- confirm that? Fact? Like, Ricardo did it in twenty fourteen, but then he got disqualified. He got. Disqualified. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. I was just trying to think, is like, what's going on there? So we'll go yeah, on now. Because Australia's had a couple of decent drivers. It's yeah. mad that they haven't. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Race predictions? It's a couple. Yeah. Race, Race predictions? Top three? Jesus. I'm going to say Sebastian Vettel for the win. Danny Ricciardo second. Max Verstappen third. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go and say, because over the last two weeks from looking at data and looking at the confidence in the Mercedes team, I'm going to say Hamilton wins outright in Australia by 10 seconds. Who for Bottas? No, no. Vettel second, Ricardo third. Oh, that's an interesting podium. Just because Bottas will drop back at the start and then he can't overtake in Australia. Well, mm. Look, Bottas is a second string driver. If a second string driver is going to win the championship, they have to nail it on the first two Grand Prix. Yeah. So this is Bottas's chance. Will he take it? I don't think personally that he will. Um, he's gone up against. One I, I hope he does something. I really do, but I just can't see it. He's he gone up against one. He's me. gone up against one of the best of all time. He can beat him occasionally if the stars align for him. But across the season, it's not going to happen. The thing is, though, you just said it there. He can beat him. Yeah, when the stars align for him, the okay. stars don't align very often. Well, how many times did they align last season? Well, he beat him outright four Three, times. Four, uh, f- four times, like over twenty races. Yeah, so it's not a lot. More than five. It's twenty percent of the time. Look, if it's closer this season, Mercedes aren't going to allow them battling. Of course, they'll allow battles. They can't. They really can't. Why can't they? Because they're giving away points to Ferrari. Do you think Ferrari have a, a serious risk of taking the constructors if they're not careful? Do you think Ferrari are going to be. If, if you're insisting that America's <laughs> going to be that dominant, can Ferrari take enough points off them to cost them the constructors? Considering how Kimi Raikkonen's been driving for the past few seasons. Well, we saw it in 2015. Vettel. In a car that was a lot worse than the Mark Vettel was still within contention of second place going into the second last race, wasn't it? In 2015. Vettel kept himself in contention for second place right up to the end. Yeah, that's true. Rosberg only actually took back second place from Vettel for like four races to go or something. And look what happened there. What, in 2015? Oh, never mind, Hamilton never mind. won 2015. <laughs> yeah, that's right, I forgot about that. <laughs> so Josh, your top three for the race? Hamilton. Win. Hamilton for the win, yeah. uh, Vettel second, and Ricardo to get his podium. Same as me. All born Boom. bastards. Uh, I look, as I said, I hope Bottas does something, but I don't think he will. I don't think he has it in him. No, he doesn't. No, no. Sadly he's a enough. good. He he's knows a his very, place in the team. He's a very good driver, but if t- when Toto Wolff says jump, Valtteri, Valtteri says how high? Is he as good as Rubens? Better. Oh, he's a lot better. Oh, he's than a lot Rubens. better than Rubens. Well, See, he's filling the Rubens role. He falls into this bracket. The poor fucker. That's all I can say about Valtteri. The Boss. Hulkenberg bracket. He falls into the Hulkenberg bracket where he's a brilliant driver, but he's not quite good enough to be number one in a top team, and he's not quite poor enough to be a solid number two. But I think we got to look at like how bad is Stroll, if that's the case? Because then the Bottas was whipping Massa at Williams. Massa whipped Stroll, and and now we're going to see what happens this year. It's like. I don't think Bottas whipped Massa. He did. He did. He absolutely. Did he? He did. He, like, scored double points Lord. on him. All right. He did whip him. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so. But Massa was intending to retire that first time. Do you know he wasn't? He wasn't exactly going on. So out. was he last year? Oh, he did retire eventually. Like he was forced out. He didn't have that twenty million to fight him. <laughs> he still deserves the seat. Um, side bets. Side bets. Yeah. Who's going to be team number four? McLaren. McLaren. Yeah, it has to say McLaren as well. Uh, will Van Dorn bring anything special this year? It's hard Is to Alonso say. over the hill? No. Nearly. He's nearly over the hill, but 
Van Dorn needs to bring it this season or he's in big trouble I don't think he's in trouble at all I think he's more than done enough to deserve, deserve a seat deserve he'll, a have seat. The f- he'll have the full season at it even if he performs poorly in the first half <coughs> of the season I don't think he's seats in you can't no McLaren are a team going forward they can't afford to have a driver that only performs for half the season considering how he performed in GP2 he was on the money from day one but they had Kovalainen <laughs> no, Kovalainen has won more races for McLaren than Van Dorn has that's true <laughs> that's irrelevant <laughs> But um, no, going back to that though, he needs to switch it on from day one. If that car is to be as good as they say it is, they need because they're going to be, they're going to be fighting factory Renault the whole way. I think he's good enough. Do you think he's good enough? He's consistent enough to be good, but I don't know is he good enough. I don't know has he got when the chips are down on the table, will he win the race? No. Uh, well, see, if you're going to be GP two performance, you'd say yeah. Considering who, but yeah, but then you would have uh, your man Giovinazzi <coughs> driving. Giovinazzi. Yeah, like that's his problem. He goes all out. He goes balls on the table, flat out, and bins it every fucking time. Yeah, but Van Dorn doesn't do that. Van Dorn no, Van Dorn like, doesn't do that. He progresses. Yeah, I think we've seen steady progression. I think we'll continue to see it. I'm gonna. I'm I gonna, think he will be McLaren's number one driver next year. I'm gonna make a side bet. Go on. I'm gonna predict Carlos Sainz will finish fifth. In the oh, Australian Grand Prix. That's Ooh. a big call. I rate Carlos Sainz very highly. Carlos Sainz was, in terms of skill, points and everything throughout his, his two years with Verstappen, mm-hmm. he was very close to Verstappen. My issue with Carlos Sainz is, is his power unit. Will the Renault engines have it together by, by Melbourne? Renault are planning on bringing a 10 <coughs> horsepower boost from Is that testing. not in race five? No, straight okay. away. Straight away. Straight away, yeah. And then There's a go- big update coming in race five. They're going for Ferrari have also announced they're going a 10 for horsepower an boost. Additional 40, I believe it is, for race five. Fantastic. Whether or not they bring it, I don't believe so. But, you know, because that, that's automatically going to be that's going to be an engine change after five races. That's a sign of intent of going for the fourth engine right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're all going to use four. I've said it before, they're all going to use four engines. I don't think Merck are going to try I think Merck are going to try and go the distance on seven or on three. Oh, they'll pay for it. Do you think so? I think they'll pay for it. Like uh, the Merck engine is the most bulletproof, but what's the ideal race for them to pay for it? Spa, Spa, Spa is a good Monza. time. Uh, it's a case of the what's the calendar like though this year? When are the seven races up? Because they don't, you know, say like they use the engine for Melbourne. Mm. That engine mightn't be used to get into Barcelona, you mm-hmm. know, because the races, yeah, they all have different stresses in the engine, so they try and balance the stresses out across the season. To do. Uh, but I'd say Spa or Monza I think you want a new engine for going into Spa or Monza yeah because the two races fall back to back don't they this year yeah are they are a week apart now aren't they yeah it's the end of August beginning of September yeah so like that's that's definitely when you're keeping your foot planted that's when you want a new engine I'd imagine you get away with having a fairly poor engine around France qualify well it's going to be very difficult to overtake a couple of long straights circuit power card I think it does yeah but it's still very difficult to overtake it's a very narrow track it's shit it's got no kerbs and it's got like loads of runoff. It's going to be there's, the FIA, the FIA is going to have to either say fuck it lads, we don't care about track limits anymore, or they're going to have to say anybody that crosses that white line is getting a five second penalty. End of story. Five second penalty. It's the only way forward. I don't know. Like a it's, stronger enforcement on track limits. Yeah, I think I think it should be a case of all track limit violations. Should be no excuse for here no. or there. Anymore. If there's just if it's just black and white, it's easy. Yeah, force ever to stay on. Mm-hmm we wrap up on Australia then yeah let's wrap up that you don't do we see Haas getting points no uh, it's going to be very retirement dependent if there's a tangle in the first corner maybe on strategy but they're going well, to that's my side bet of the day Kevin Magnussen first retirement okay okay that's fair enough side bet. so that's it for this week's episode thanks for tuning in hope you enjoy the Australian Grand Prix and you'll hear from us again on Monday thanks very much bye bye don't forget bye. to subscribe subscribe click there oh, it's down there isn't it Anyway, that's his gentleman relish. (laughs) Somewhere. Thanks. Subscribe. Good luck. Bye. Shut up and sit down.